Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, We're the Movie Couple. I'm Wendy. And I'm Dustin. And this is our non-spoiler review for Morbius. Morbius is directed by Daniel Espinoza and stars Jared Leto, Matt Smith, Adria Arjona, Jared Harris, Tyrese Gibson, and Al Madrigal. Dr. Michael Morbius tries to cure himself of a rare blood disease. However, the experiment goes wrong and becomes a vampire-like creature. So if you've been seeing our trailer reactions for Morbius, which we've done like a, quite a few of yeah, them, we've like, done a like couple. two or three, we've actually been really liking those, re, uh, those trailers. However, um, shortly before we got to see the movie today, uh, we were already kind of hearing some earlier reviews that were letting out, and they all leaned a little bit less positive. Specifically, mm -hmm. a lot of people leaned in on that final um, end credit scene, which we're going to get a little bit into without spoiling. Um, and yes, it is a, even though it is a Sony produced film, it is still a Marvel character, therefore a comic book character, uh, sorry, a comic book movie as well, which means always just stay for the possible multiple uh, end credit scenes. Yeah, and one thing that I was really looking forward to was the fact that Morbius does kind of fit more into that hero role with kind of a curse. So if they kind of, if, they're, if Sony finds a way to be able to tweak this, he could become more of a hero figure than say Venom or say some of the other villains that uh, Sony has a lot of of control over. It really did seem like Morbius could kind of fill in that superhero role. If they find a way to be able to control his powers or be able to tweak the storyline a little bit more, they can have him kind of be the center of heroes in the Sony Cinematic Universe, seeing how they don't really have full control over Spider-Man, but finding a way to be able to introduce maybe some of the other Spider-Men into this Sony Spider-Verse. It seems like Morbius would be a really good kind of navigation point to be able to head in that direction. And nonetheless, I think we as fans and of, uh, as the audience have been wondering what they're going to do with this universe. You know, we've gotten Spider-Man, we've gotten Venom, we've gotten Carnage, now we're getting Morbius. What is this leading all up to? Um, and what does this film tell us? We're, we're, you know, there's some spoilery stuff. Obviously, this is not a spoiler review, so we won't go too much into it. But uh, we can talk just like a little bit of like um, what we think um, it, where it can lead. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say those earlier reviews really, really tamed my own expectations going in. Because, and a lot of other people just commenting too in the videos, like, this movie's gonna be bad. I'm like, well, how do you know you haven't seen it yet? Uh, but then it really, with my expectation, I was like, okay, maybe it's like, I don't know what I was expecting. It really wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that bad. Like, there's some theories or comments on the internet that's like, this is awful. And that is not what I saw. Uh, what I did see, though, is... While the story is quite easy to follow, even if you don't know the um, source material of Morbius, what the story that the movie is trying to tell is quite easy to follow. They do follow a bit of a formula when it comes to these type of comic book um, uh, superhero films, but not a, of like how we see superhero films today. More of in the era of like early 90s. And that's what we were discussing kind of in the car on the way home is... I, there was a lot of moments that felt familiar to me and what was it? I couldn't quite put my finger on it and Dustin said it felt like it was made in a different era. Yeah, honestly, that is something that Sony right now is kind of hitting with the way Carnage was edited and directed and produced. It really did feel more like a 90s style of superhero movie. Morbius also, whether you think that is a hindrance or a good quality, um, it really does hit that kind of 90s era superhero movie to where there's a lot of points that I'm kind of like, okay, I think I've seen this one before in another movie. Oh yeah, I've kind of seen this done too in a different kind of movie. And so there wasn't anything that was really excellent about it, but there wasn't anything that was done horribly wrong. And I think that was one of the things that really did help with me and this movie was the fact that I had heard just so many terrible things. And from so many different reviews, so many different comments on our, um, on our trailer reactions, it really did kind of curb my hype and it really did kind of curb my um, expectations for this movie. 
And I will say I did really enjoy the performances by our actors in this. Jared Leto and Matt Smith are fun to watch on screen together. Um, honestly, everybody was fun to watch. It was also for me the choppy editing. It was really, really weird where they there they do a little bit of time jump and which is not you know out of the ordinary for any film to do a time jump flashback to give a little exposition and, and then and then flash forward to present day. But they don't really let you know where you are at that moment. So you have to like watch this. It'll be like, okay, we're in this. Okay, yeah. this is late. This is how many years later? So that was kind of abrupt, and it was kind of throughout the movie. And I don't know if they felt like they had to chop it down for time, or they just felt that it was necessary to to sort of trim those uh, parts out. I don't know, but it was pretty apparent because it was the cuts felt a little rough. And it makes sense that they would have a little problem with editing in this because this movie was supposed to take place in a completely different time period. This was supposed to take place before uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. So they now had to find a way to kind of retrofit and fix this and try to make it so it fit the timeline in which it was playing in. And the way that you have to edit that is a very difficult task. Mm. And I don't think they quite nailed it. There were a lot of different things that were kind of up in the air. There were some things that I didn't quite like. I think you could take this movie re-edit it, kind of like how some people have done The Phantom Menace, <laughs> and you could get a pretty solid, uh, um, a pretty good movie out of this. I just feel like, uh, the, like Wendy said, the performances were good. Um, the storyline makes sense. It's easy to follow. However, I just feel like there was just something that was just kind of missing yeah. from it. I didn't particularly felt connected to any of the characters. Yeah. I did enjoy Al Madrigal's character. Uh, he plays uh, the detective, uh, another detective that's working with Tyrese Gibson's character, who's also a detective, uh, in this film. And he just had, he, I felt like he was having the most fun <laughs> saying his lines. I don't know if some of them were like improv or not certain. It felt like it because it felt natural. And I liked, uh, you know, his role gave us a little bit of that uh, comedic touch in there. And there were some horror elements in there. Yeah. I really did enjoy a couple scares? of them where I was like, eh, I mean, jump scares, not really. But um, definitely some, some uh, they play with shadow and light a little bit. And they, you know, some of the very classic... Uh, scenes where you're like, is this gonna, you know, it's a little predictable, but it's still a lot, a lot of fun to see. So I always enjoy a little bit of horror elements, especially for a character like Morbius. There's also a lot of bats in this movie. A lot. Which I kind of quite enjoy. There's, uh, this is in the trailer, so everybody's seen this part, unless you haven't seen the trailer, then maybe cover your ears. But um, when Dr. Morbius um, is in Costa Rica and steps off the helicopter, he's in all black, he's got this drapey coat on, and he's got his um, crutches or walkers. And I was like, oh, that's like straight up just how, like, you know, if you see the bats walk, that's kind of mm -hmm. how, how they do it. And so I, 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 enjoy seeing what they were trying to do there and like, oh, it's like I see you over there with the bats I enjoyed that um, special effects were okay you know yeah. sometimes it was a little iffy but for the most part it was okay there were some moments where I'm kind of like <laughs> Buffy <laughs> Buffy the Vampire little, Slayer effects a little bit to where the way that they did some of the design of like him flashing there's moments you should kind of see some of them in the trailer yes, when he of him going like that back and forth where he's kind of fighting, fighting the bat fighting inside. Fighting the urge. <laughs> fighting the urge. Yes. Um, that kind of remind me of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Um, overall, though, I'm going to say that this movie was kind of, overall, just kind of like at a solid mm -hmm. like line. There wasn't anything amazing about it, but yeah. there also wasn't anything horrible Correct. about it. Yeah. I was like, I'm about to, because of those reviews, but some people made it sound so dramatic. I was yeah. like, it's really not that bad. Uh, with that said, do you want to go ahead and give your, uh, your rating for this? Overall, this movie still is kind of moving in that direction for the Sony Cinematic Universe. Uh, for the, I'm sorry, Sony Spider-Verse. <laughs> so, I'm going to say stream it. I don't think there's really anything in this movie that you're like, have to go out to the theaters and spend that extra money. I'd say once it comes out on VOD or you can rent it somewhere, I'm still going to say go ahead and stream it. Yes, I would actually uh, give the same rating as well. Stream it. So while we love seeing films in theaters and this again it was it's always great to see a movie in theaters if you are you know we're still living living in a pandemic so i know some people feel sort of ways to uh going to a theater is it okay and we would say this one you could you could probably wait a little bit that's just kind of mm -hmm. our opinion um, 
Also, there were some things that really did feel shoehorned in there. Um, yeah. Just like all Marvel movies or all Sony Marvel movies, there are end credit scenes. Mm. So I don't think you have to wait until after the scroll starts. Yeah. But when you see them, you'll see what we mean by they really kind of crammed the, just going to be like, we got to fit this in here somehow. Yeah, it didn't feel natural to me. Uh, and again, it and could also... There's a lot of scenes that were cut from the trailer. It's... Right. And I, I think a part of it, it felt shoehorned in, is because I really never felt super connected to any of the characters at all. Yeah. So that is it. That is our non-spoiler review. When you see more BS, please come back to this video and let us know your thoughts in the comment section below of the whole movie as well as the post credit scenes. All right, guys, that's it for us. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.